This might look like I'm out in the middle of the darkness, but really, I'm in the middle of the darkness, but on an aqueduct next to a viaduct. That's pretty cool. This video comes from the realm that exists between not being able to get to sleep and absolutely loving being out and about taking photographs like these. Hello there my friends, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and I like to try and do cool sort of stuff while I'm out and about. Let's have a look what's over here in the gloom. Is it just me walking into the darkness or can we employ the help of a super torch and bring an incredibly misty and very eerie shake viaduct and aqueduct into shot and then just as quick as I appeared I'm gone. Some of you will be familiar with this area and of course most of you probably won't but this is the river Kiriog that runs down underneath the arches of the aqueduct and viaduct just a few hundred feet in that direction but this is also right at the bottom of as you can see a very steep bank on the far side if I light it up a little bit better there we go and just along the top of that is where the track leading to the aqueduct from Chirk Bank is so as you can imagine there is considerable erosion occurring and of course the track up at the top has got massive cracks developed in it and there's a house right on the edge that is also now derelict and a very sad and sorry looking state compared to its once glorious well, everything was glorious about it, not only the house itself, but the location around the corner from the aqueduct with the steep drop into the fields behind it and the river at the bottom of that. But unfortunately, it seems that that also, over history, has become that wonderful building's undoing. So we are now on that track that I just mentioned. Here is the derelict former absolutely beautiful building here. Very sad to see. As I say, you've got that river chewing away at the hillside, only a few hundred feet away if that. And then the infamous crack in the track itself, you can see it's a significant change and a significant drop, even with the packing and extra hardcore or whatever that gravelly stuff is they've put down. And again, you can just look at this and see these aren't just little cracks, these are cracks that are filled up with leaves and a good few inches down in some places. I mean, just look at it and look at this again, putting more chippings down so that it's not such a significant bump up and down between the cracked levels. I've said it many times before, imagine if that happened only 20 feet to the left hand side beneath or in the edge and siding of the canal itself. I hope this video is coming off as a nice, calm, relaxing experience rather than just outright weird. Anyway, at the aqueduct, that was a failed photo and that was a much more successful photo. I didn't realise that I had the uh, long exposure on for the first picture. And so here we are on the aqueduct itself. Absolutely lovely stuff. It's uh, about ten past midnight, I think, at this point. I just stop and give it a quick pan around without putting the super torch on full. You can see you've obviously got the viaduct there and the uh, very narrow little channel of water to squeeze your boats through. Lovely stuff. You know what, I've been here on boats, boots, bikes, carrying a little sack cart filled and loaded up with uh, bags of coal from the village of Chirk over the way. Many, many wonderful memories and moments from here. Beautiful. Oh, and just for interest's sake, this is where we just were, down in the field here. Again, you can see with a bit of an open space, even through the mist, the uh, true illuminating power and floodlighting ability of the Super Torch. That's nowhere near full battery charge either at the moment. Okay my friends, once again this is the sort of stuff that I do to get these little clips and to try and get these little uh, screenshots to use as sort of profile pictures of just cool backgrounds and that and it requires a surprising amount of setup. 
These are the sorts of things that I think must look the most bizarre to any onlookers who happen to see me out and about in the distance with my torch, pacing up and down and standing around as I'm basically doing multiple different takes to hopefully get that one perfect screenshot. Look at this weird awkwardness as well where I don't know where to hold my hands before I start speaking. This might look like it's going to be a boring video in the darkness, but look at this. We're actually on an aqueduct right next to a viaduct. How cool is this, my friends? Not a bad way to spend midnight in January. Okay, so that was another interesting little take. Let's see, was that any good? This is the sort of stuff that I'm saying to myself normally, trying to convince myself it's fine to be here in the pitch black conditions like this. <laughs> Now the question is, as I walk towards you, can I stop maybe around here, point the super torch over my shoulder, give you a thumbs up and potentially have a decent photograph? Maybe, maybe not, let's find out. Now, ideally I'll get a decent screenshot of this. Okay, and that's the that's me done, and then some for the night, I think. Better just put the uh, fan on, on the torch. It is extremely hot at the moment. Just gonna start holding it at the end, I think. <laughs> as completely bizarre and odd as this video has probably been, I do hope at the very least it has helped to give you a sense of the peace and calm that I often find out at these various unusual locations in the ridiculously late or, in a sense, the very early hours of the day, and things like my recent trip up to the ruins of Dinis Bran in the darkness or visits to the rather scenic little footbridges there are dotted around on the canal. There's just something lovely about being in these remote places where you can say you're probably the only person up and about and walking around. It's not always the case, and it can be sometimes startling to see a light heading down the towpath towards you, but there is something so calm and beautiful and just, I suppose, in a strange way silent when you're in these places, not necessarily because there is no sound, but because somewhere like this little bridge is directly uphill from the River Dee, so the sound of the river rushing by and maybe a little crinkle of leaves on the trees and a few drips of water into the canals or the wind rushing round your ears at Dinis Bran completely and utterly drown out any other unnatural sound. So in that strange sense, it can be noisy and filled with sound but also tremendously peaceful and feel quiet, if that makes any kind of sense. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. Please consider checking out my books about boat life, my Patreon page with loads of free stuff on it, and my new podcast series. Links in the description. Have a wonderful day, my friends.